So BlockRef sits in a pretty unique situation when it comes to understanding and tackling a fragmented connected home. And so as you mentioned, there are a lot of devices in a household today. BlockRef, we are owned by Comcast and Charter and Viacom CBS. And we actually work with the MVPDs who are also the ISPs to really tie together the combination of set-top box and digital devices because, again, they are the ISP. And so it's a combination of the set-top box and the router in the home that BlockRef actually uh, supports and sits on top of. And so just the nature of the ability to understand what consumption is happening across any TV device or digital device in a home starts with really tackling the issue around fragmentation. The data assets that we sit on actually unify all the devices in the home because we are capable of bringing together uh, via the set-top box and the router any consumption or ad exposure that is taking place across any device in that home. So we've really uh, done a great job in being able to unify audiences or unify devices because of the unique data assets that we are sitting on top of. So, and that's really interesting, and the, I guess fragmentation isn't your only issue. Um, marketers face a lot of challenges around um, activating first and third party data sets, the accuracy of these data sets uh, and the speed, um, as well as privacy and data protections. Like, what, are, what, are, what, are, what does Block, BlockGraph do to uh, help with all those issues? Yeah, well first we could tackle speed. So, so BlockRef, we're actually software. We're software that sits within a data owner's own infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And we're peer to peer. And so the ability for a data provider uh, alongside an MVPD or a brand or other suppliers to be able to share information or match data, the peer to peer software does it in seconds and minutes. Mm -hmm. And so. So we've tackled the ability for movement and activation of audiences because of the nature of that we are software that's a peer-to-peer -peer environment and allows for interactivity. It doesn't require really any middleman to be able to, to activate the two via the identity structure. Mm -hmm. Everything that we sit on for the most part is first party data, but as you know, there's a lot of data providers out there or brands that want to use some sort of third party data. The question around accuracy really is based on the eye of the beholder. Um, we're not there to actually say whether a data asset is, uh, is more accurate than another data asset, but we are there to be able to make sure that the data that is being utilized, the third party data, is accurately tied to the home that that advertiser is looking to, to reach or to utilize. And so there are other companies out there that are obviously measuring how accurate third-party data is, mm -hmm. but that is, that is for the eye of the beholder, and mm -hmm. that is for, um, for us to, to let someone else to honestly utilize. Ours is about accuracy in terms of matching and accuracy in terms of activation, mm -hmm. and along with the speed that exists on top of that. Do, do you advise clients to try and stick with first-party data sources over third, or do you... Not well, it, I mean, I think privacy is a key function here, and, mm. and, and consent uh, is, a, is a factor, and certainly first-party data when it comes to uh, knowing the home yeah. uh, and knowing the, the customers, yeah. uh, I think is, is where things should start, right? Especially yeah. when you're activating in a TV environment. I, I believe there's lots of great third-party data providers out there, mm -hmm. and so I, I would advise clients to utilize third and first party data, um, mm -hmm. depending on their, their goals and, and strategies. In terms of CPG, as an example, right, and consumer packaged goods, mm -hmm. you really need to rely on third party data because in some cases those manufacturers don't have first party data. Mm -hmm. um, same thing in the automotive industry. Mm -hmm. Someone going to an endemic website like a Cox Automotive, like an Auto Trader or Kelly Book, you know, Kelly Blue Book, that could be considered third party data. And how that gets applied to, for a brand to activate against television mm -hmm. uh, is where BlockRef can support that ability to uh, activate that audience with speed, given the fact that it's an in-market automotive um, you know, data set mm -hmm. for a brand to buy across the likes of a MVPD or a supplier. So I, I'm, I, I believe in, in all data assets that are, are valuable depending on the goals and the strategies that clients are looking to achieve. Yeah, okay, that's a good point. So what do you see, just to sum this all up then, is the, the sort of the greatest challenge, if you like, 
facing uh, marketers who are looking to target audiences sort of across all those TV and video touch points? The, the hardest thing to tackle today s still is around frequency management mm. um, and, and recognizing that in the world of television, heavy viewers, consumers who consume a lot of content, um, you know, 20 to 30 percent of that audience are really uh, being reached overexposed, mm. and then the the 60 plus percent of the of the rest of the audience is being underexposed. And so, fragmentation, as we know it today, so many devices in the home, how mm. people are consuming content, has made that problem even more difficult to solve. Mm -hmm. and, and so, I think that the ability and nature to really unify. Uh, audiences in a way that supports brands' ability to frequency manage uh, is the most important aspect. It's the data being applied to a home or to an, to an individual or to a vice, that's, that's been solved for today. Mm -hmm. But being able to tie all the devices in that home uh, across all the different apps and all the different programmers to understand how a marketer in particular can manage frequency that's, that's really the, the solve that's most important for the industry today. I think I, that's a good way to cap it off and, and the way I'd summarize it is that we have all this wonderful technology out there and it is actually to help brands get back to basics to deal with their, their reach and frequency it's so um, true. for their campaigns. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's, it's reach and frequency is still the number one driver for mm -hmm. brand lift, for sales, and, and, and it's become harder. Yeah. because of the nature of fragmentation. But the technology is there. It's going to require collaboration. Mm -hmm. uh, you hear interoperability a lot, mm -hmm. right? And those are the key things that, you know, having a core identity structure that everyone agrees to. Mm -hmm. um, and so those are really the key things that need to, to be further solved. And we believe BlockRef uh, in what we're doing is we're helping bring uh, the industry together because we are a privacy safe way for MVPDs or brands, suppliers to control their first party data, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to have, since we are software and we're a peer-to-peer -peer infrastructure, uh, the ability to have the systems, have the data sit within their own environment and not have to, to leave in any raw form, mm -hmm. but to be able to interoperate with their, with their partners mm -hmm. to solve for that level of fragmentation and to be able to support a better overall experience for the consumers. Mm -hmm and for the brands who are looking to really uh, not overexpose consumers in one device and mm -hmm. be able to manage frequency and, and, and get core reach, incremental reach, which is important.